Hey everyone, what's going on? My name is Stephanie Graham. I'm an artist and filmmaker, and I'm also an extremely curious person. Some will go as far as to say that I am nosy as fuck. The nerve. <laughs> I started this podcast because I wanted to interview people. I'm not just talking to anyone either. I'm talking to people who are in the thick of what they do. I want to know how they live their life and how they get things done so that I could apply some of their savvy to my own life. I'm sharing this with you so that you too can do the same. We can do it together. We all got to start somewhere. And if you're not looking for practical info, stick around anyway, because my guests are fascinating and it's my goal to get to the bottom of their shh. I mean, aren't we all just a little bit curious of what it's like to live someone else's life? And if we do it the same? There are also times when I will feel called to catch up with you one-on-one -on -one and let you know about what's going on with me, either in life or with my art practice. You didn't think I'd get the dirt on all these cool people and not let you know what's going on with me, did you? I mean, I'm a Libra. We believe in balance. Listen, I am a big believer that even though we are all different, we can still find ways to relate to each other. It's time to get down to business, so welcome to the Nosy AF Podcast. Hello, listeners. Welcome back to another episode of Nosy AF. Guess what? The writer's strike is over. Yay! I'm so excited. And it really seems like the writers got what they wanted. Yes. See, this is such a lesson that, you know what? You got to stand for what you believe in, okay? That means for the writer's strike. That means for some dude trying to play you. That means for a boss acting crazy. All of that. You got to stand for what you want, okay? And I'm so excited for the writers. This is beyond exciting. And yeah, I'm just so excited about that. So today, in today's episode of Nosy AF, we are journeying deep into the heart of the art world with a guest whose influence extends far beyond his masterpieces. From the thriving art scene of Atlanta, Georgia, please let me introduce you to a man whose titles stretch far and wide, world-class, museum-exhibited artist, founder and CEO of Black Art in America, collector, producer, arts advocate, philanthropist, the indomitable Najee Dorsey. Yeah, I'm so excited about Najee being here. Najee's commitment to art does not just stop at creating. He's established the Black Art in America Gallery and Sculpture Gardens in Atlanta as a landmark destination for all art enthusiasts. With every sculpture and painting, this space encapsulates the essence of Black artistry, history, and the profound depth of creative expression. So if you're curious about what drives the man behind such powerful initiatives, the passion that fuels his artistry, and what it really means to create a space that celebrates Black art in its entirety, then you're in for a treat. Naji, welcome to Nosy AF. Let's delve into your creative, incredible journey. Now listen, this interview was another one recorded while I was in Canada. Naji mentions events that have already happened, <laughs> but I'm pretty sure that he's going to do these events again. So it's just something for us to keep in mind for 2024. So with that being said, let's start this conversation. Welcome, Naji. Thank you. We're just jumping right into it. Okay, like a professional. Sounds, <laughs> ah, that sounds good. So so good to put a put a face with the voice, man. How you doing? Really good. I know. It's like I was thinking, I was like, have I I don't know if we've like ever had to FaceTime or we've worked basically just on the phone with JPEGs mm -hmm. That's right. on my screen. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that's it's really cool. So yeah, so Najee Dorsey, we have here. And you are a artist first, mm -hmm. artist first, art collector, art gallerist. Do you have a favorite? Hmm. No, I wouldn't say that I got. I have a favorite because they all they all feed me in in in, in different ways, and they're they're all interconnected too. So, you know, being an artist, I think, makes me a stronger collector and and gallerist. And I would say the same for, for all of them, like being a gallerist, 
helps me to understand artists a little bit more. And, and I think about, you know, the business side of, you know, growing a, growing a gallery, growing a gallery business, dealing with collectors and things of that nature. I think just wearing the multiple hats that I, that I wear just, you know, makes me that much stronger in, 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 in the space, but it's, it's, it's all connected. You know, it's all, it's all part of the, the, the biosphere. Yeah. How'd you get into art? What, how did, yeah. And, and can you also share, like, I can describe your art and I am happy to, but I would love for you like to share your art with the audience. Tell us about it. If you can describe it yeah. to us. Yeah. So my work is, is, has, has been primarily mixed media and uh, photo montage, a combination of paint, uh, photography, found objects. Uh, uh, I draw on a, on a narrative that's primarily Southern in nature, I believe, and, and historical at times, socially relevant. You know, at times I go across a number of different themes in, 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 in my work. But yeah, it's, 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 it's distinguishable. It's, it's it's familiar. It's colorful. It's tactile. It's it's gumbo. You know, yes. it's, it's, it's a common combination of so many just wonderful elements that's found in in many different art forms. But you know, put together and and in what I do, that becomes visually interesting. And I hope to to many people, it's proven to be visually interesting and impactful to many people for a long period of time. Yes, it's. I think it's beautiful, and it's so color colorful and so rich i can't wait to see it in person like an original in person because naji and i have worked together we were introduced through my tv gig i was working on a tv show where a director had wanted i can't remember the name of the artist and i don't know if you remember but one of the directors had wanted one of the artworks and you represented the artist yeah yeah i can't recall i can't recall either but i think it was for the what the the Chicago was it the Chicago PD or Chicago? Yeah, it was for Chicago PD. I just can't remember the director, and I can't remember the artist because the directors change all the time on the show. I see. Yeah, like yeah. every every eight days, we're like shooting a new episode, and so it's like some of the directors they'll come back, but we're always like prepping one, filming one, prepping one, filming one. So I can't remember. But anyway, so the director wanted this artwork, and. Maybe I found the artist and the artist is like my gal, you need to talk to my gallerist about it. And then that's how we found you. And then you gave us the artwork, but then you just became, you're like, I'm also an artist. And then you've just been like a resource for us ever since, because in, you know, in TV, finding artists that, you know, we can get their work really fast. Yeah. It's just like, it's, it's so helpful. So yeah, you've been like a great resource for that. People are always like now like, oh yeah, Naji, 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 like says <laughs> like the studio. <laughs> okay, um, right. For our yeah, like as like a resource is like a gallery that can like work quick, if not your artwork yourself. But it's interesting because I had always known of black art in America. Oh yeah. So then yes, yeah, so you have black art in America, which we'll talk about, but it was cool to be able like to work directly because I just had like seen it, but then never had to interact for for TV or like never even knew, just had heard the name, I guess, really. Okay. Yeah. We, we've been around for a little, for, for a minute. We celebrate 13 years. Actually, May 1st was our 13th year as a company. So Oh, we wow. Congratulations. Years. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. We're excited about the work that we put in and looking forward to, to doing more exciting and fun uh, projects, you know, moving into the future. Yeah. We're in, we're, we're in our headquarters. I mean, we're, we're coming up on one year in this space. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So let's talk about that. Okay. So you started black art in America because why? Well, I was, I was at a dinner table in Chicago, as a matter of fact, with a number of artists and collectors and, you know, the conversations that we, we had about lack of representation and, you know, finding ways to connect and why, you know, many artists in our communities was, you know, wouldn't get the shine that they would do. A lot of that's largely due to media, you know, media controls what people see. And so I had the, the bright idea, right? Our school dropout, <laughs> you know, gra graduated English on the curve. I mean, who am I to think about having a publishing company, right? And so, but, you know, just the mother, you know, they say a necessity is a mother of invention. So just, Decided that we was going to start a company focused on the African American uh, visual culture and document, preserve, and promote, 
and it just kind of it it took off, you know. So yeah, so that's how that's how I started, and and we just you know we just grew. It grew out of you know a, a need, and it grew out of pure passion. You know, the first you know two and a half years, I mean, you know, it wasn't like we was making any money. It was just a passion project that was needed. I was having a lot of fun, and, and um, you know, I, I enjoy piece in the puzzle. So. Um, yeah. So then when it started, it was a blog of you sharing artists and their artworks. Mm -hmm. OK, because by the time I found out about it, you all had it was like a full you can buy artwork from there. And then next thing you know, you had your gallery. So it's like, yeah. 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 We started back in the name days where you had a you had a social platform. Members was able to set up their own page. So very similar to Facebook set up their own page, promote upcoming calendar events. The forums back then were really jumping, having various discussions about art and what was going on in the market and whatnot. So we've gone through, I would say, three, you know, three primary iterations of Baya. First was a social, the social network component. And then there were some limitations and, and some challenges with that. And then we went more to editorial uh, piece where we started to to pay contributing writers to to write. And uh, I call that Baya 2.0. And that would that that change would have come, you know, say seven years ago. And then three years ago, we launched the the most recent edition of Baya. And we just really had a change. We had a change probably actually when we launched when we launched a new headquarters. So we went to a fully integrated site because we've got we have Black Art in America and various other properties like Garden Art for the Soul and Dewey Basel and everything black. And so we just kind of you know, put the attention on the core business, which is Black Art in America and Garden Art for the Soul and 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 made the site fully integrated between the two, as well as for the news articles. And that change came in last year, right before we opened. No, actually right after we opened last shown. So, you know, we're constantly growing and trying to, you know, figure out better ways to serve the community and serve the people who are interested in, you know, buying and learning about African-American art. Yeah, you know, the whole idea of a gallerist is so cool to me. Like there's times where I feel in art school or I didn't go to art school, like film school, I guess, like if I take it, I took some photography classes. But I don't know. I feel like if there was a time when someone's like, hey, there's this job called being a gallerist and you can sell people's art, I would have been all about it. Like, I think it's so fun and so cool. I was watching a documentary with Jeffrey Deitch. That guy was like watching him like walk around and like sell people art and talking to people about art and giving them, giving them like suggestions of where to go. Just the whole thought. I'm like, they need, this needs to be like a major in school. And then I got meet people like on my block that are like really good at selling or they're like really into culture or like aesthetic. And I'm like, you should totally like look into this. Now that's like such an easier thing to say. You just don't tell someone, oh, you should just totally be a gallerist. But, but I don't know. I just, so I just love that you have that. Like, do you like it? <laughs> Is it fun I mean, selling art? It, it's, it's, I mean, I, I, I love it. I mean, I love it, but it's work, you know, it's, it's and, and, and I, I really wish people, particularly the artists, could see how invested we are in what we do to promote their work and create opportunities and showcase. Because oftentimes they only think about the 50% commission or whatever that commission structure is, as if it's taking something away without really understanding, okay, we got six employees at Black Art in America. <laughs> you know, we got a million dollar renovation and, you know, we got, you know, all these various things and costs that are fixed costs involved with creating an environment, a welcome space and 13, that's not taking into account the 13 years of running a company and building relationships of trust and where people trust your eye, trust your judgment and want to do business with you. So everything that we've done has led to a point where people, you know, they want to, they want to show with us. So they may want to, you know, they want to buy work, buy work from us because they trust, you know, I'm, I mean, I'm very visible in the field, you know, I'm, I'm very visible artist. Satiri and I are very active collectors. Like we're all about this life, and I trust my eye. I mean, I know I've got a great eye to identify a talent, and I think that for the artists that we've really bought into, you know, we've created opportunities for them to help accelerate their careers. And so it's sexy, you know, when it's you know the lights are on and you, you mount a new show and you got people coming in. But you know, it's kind of like the tip of the iceberg. You see the tip of the iceberg, but you don't see that under girth. That's the work, 
<laughs> you know, yeah. it's like, and then the investment. So there's a lot to be in the galleries, but I mean, I would say if, if, if anyone out there wants to, uh, to start, like just, you know, just, just start small, really like the reason why I became a gallerist, because I realized that, Hey, the people that's buying my art, my personal work, you know, they buy other art too. You know, why not introduce them to the artists that I think are doing tremendous work that I'm finding value in that Satiri and I are collecting. And then, you know, the, the, the collectors, they, you know, they trust, they trust that. And, and so that's kind of how I started, you know, it's, it's, it, it wasn't really complicated. And, and you could, and you could start off, you, you know, yourself with doing a pop-up show in your home, you know, maybe renting out a venue space, doing something at the, the local library. So there's ways to introduce art to the public, you know, and I think over time you build, you can build relationships and a reputation for doing so. And, you know, artists will seek you out, you know, collectors, you know, recommend you to their friends if they're happy with the work and happy with the service that you provide. So, you know, the opportunities are there. You don't have to start with these grand spaces and have a tremendous amount invested. It could be as simple as, you know, you got beautiful wall space there. I see inviting some some friends over, <laughs> you know, and have a little wine, a little cheese and invite the artists, have them talk about the work and, and let let people mingle and people will decide what they're interested in. That's the beauty. That's the beauty about what we do is just, you know, we just facilitate opportunities for people to connect artists to collect their collected to artists collected to material so yeah i wish there was just like a program for folks to know about it for folks to know like maybe there could be like gallery university or something gallery university i just think like there's so many jobs that people just i remember i went out with this guy who's just i was telling him like about my work and he's like you have a job that no one knows about <laughs> And I'm like, yeah, and I feel like sometimes these different art art jobs are jobs that people don't know about. And you just people just appear and see that you have a gallery without no idea how to get started or even that it's even a possibility. So, yeah, I just think that it's cool. You sort of have like this. You're like an artist and a gallerist, sort of like like Jay-Z who has like a record label and also an artist and like the Jay-Z of the art world. Yeah. I'm kind of, I'm kind of, I'm kind of, you know, one of those guys, you know, no doubt. And I, I went, when the creator was giving out ambition and talent, I went in line a couple of times. So <laughs> like, <laughs> sir, were you just here? <laughs> yeah. Right. You know, I mean, I, you know, the, the thing, the thing though, is that, you know, I think we have more capacity than we give ourselves credit for. You know, and I think if you're truly invested and interested in what you're doing, you'll find ways to, you know, to serve. I mean, really, success is about serving, you know, like you can't be self-serving and, and be able to create, you know, what we've created. I mean, we've had to create opportunities for artists and serve collectors and invest in what we're doing, invest in community and culture. So it's um, it's pretty it's pretty dope. I mean, I, you know, I, I know, I know I'm a unicorn, you know what I'm saying? Like, I know, you know, that this is, this, this is not normal. You're talking to, again, an art school dropout, you know, and, you know, without no social standing to be able to build what, you know, build what we built, you know, has come from making some, some really good decisions and making some, you know, tremendous investments and, and being present, being consistent, being authentic. And just working, you know what I'm saying? Putting in, putting in work, you know, and, and having Satiria, my wife, to kind of hold it down in the times when I've had my ebbs and flows. You know what I mean? Like, so it's, yeah, it's, 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 it's obtainable. Like, I've, I've, there's a quote that I quote all the time from someone that I knew who wrote a book on stewardship. And she, and she, she said in a book that, you know, I believe that the universe is designed in such a manner that if we put forth the effort, it must yield to us. And so I and I subscribe to that. Like there's really never really been much in my life that I've been interested in seeing for myself and that I was willing to work towards that I haven't obtained. You know, so the thing that I'm prepared for now is, you know, just, you know, health and longevity and continue to, to do what we're doing and, you know, be of service and to grow. You know, like what people don't know, I mean, it's kind of the first thing, first interview that I'm kind of sharing. I'm actually, you know, we're actually growing the team. So and putting things in place so I could step, step, 
step step aside just a hair and get back to focusing on my own creative pursuit, my own practice as a as a, as an artist. I mean, I've always been one of the one of the staples for the company, of course, because I'm one of the more visible and, and more known artists. But bias taking a you know taking time away from my own individual practice, and so I'm looking at, to get, get some of that time back. You know. Yeah, that was I think one of my questions is how how your own personal practice informs or how how your work at Baya informs your own personal practice. Like do you draw inspiration of from the business of art into your own practice or does it change the way that you look at your art making? No, I think I think what it does is it's giving me time to really kind of formulate and stew on concepts and ideas. Not necessarily inspiration. I think the inspiration comes from situations like seeing how the demand for our work has grown over time. And but I'm but I'm looking at it from a standpoint of okay, I need to find time for myself to so I could take part in that. You know what I mean? I, I've seen many of my colleagues, many of many of whom you know we represented their work or sold their work over time. You know, I mean, get tremendous opportunities which they're well deserved deserved of. But I'm like, you know, I'm I'm an artist, too. And I'm not just, you know, not just any artist, not being boastful or anything, but I'm, I'm a hell of an artist. And 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 so, like, the inspiration comes in and knowing that, OK, when when I kind of, you know, put my own career on this on a on a on simmer for a minute to really kind of build by it that a. Is the fire is hot, you know, everything's hot and bothered right now. That the opportunity is the, the opportunity time is perfect for me to kind of, you know, let me let me get in that studio, let me get in there and, and put that same energy that I put in the building by you back into my own personal practice and knowing that there are more opportunities today than there were, you know, years ago. And so, like, I want to take part in that. Yeah. So, so man, what does like a regular day look like for you? Wait, if you can give, like, what time do you wake up? And like, how does it go? It's, it's <laughs> it, it, you know, there's no, there's no. Man. Do you keep a to-do list of like. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I got, I got, thankfully I got, I got, I got some help. I got teams. Uh, oh, okay. Here I got Dante is my executive assistant. They, they, they kind of, um, that I've kind of put in place to take care of a number of different things, but yeah, I have, I have to, I have to do's that are like urgent, like okay, I gotta, I gotta focus on this one because this is something that I've got to do personally. But my normal day, typically, and it's it's changing. Creativity wakes me up in the middle of the morning, right? So like now that I'm back in the studio, where I had been getting up at say six or seven. I think cause also I'm getting older. Like there was a time like a few years ago, I was getting up at like five every day. A, oh my God. And like, as soon as I hit 50, I'm like, man, it's, you know, I'm getting up at six thirty, <laughs> and, and, and I'm like, okay. So, but anyway, but since I've been back in the studio, like this morning, I woke up at three thirty. you know, and I woke up because of, you know, you're getting older and you got to go do some stuff when you wake up at three thirty. Uh huh. But <laughs> I was like, I was, I was tossing in the bed. I was like, man, I got the canvases downstairs. <laughs> so oh I, say, my gosh. I, say, I, I say, well, you know, I could lay, I could, I could force myself to go back to sleep and wake up in two hours, or I could just go in, you know, put some energy toward this work. And so I've been up since three 30 this morning, probably going to need a nap before getting ready to watch the ball game tonight. But, but, but I'm motivated. I'm motivated and I'm inspired. I'm working on a new body of work. A new body of work that's absent of people. Like I'm, 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 I'm intentionally working on landscapes right now. Wow, you know? that's new for you. Yeah. yeah, you do like all these narrative scenes, family scene, not family scenes, but people scenes. I would think. Yeah, yeah, that's that's true. But I'm gonna challenge you. Look at my work because some people, some people seeing the landscape, they said, "Man, I like these, but it's different." I said, "No, it's different for you. It's not." If you look at my pieces like Return to Eden or a lot of those pieces from Leaving Mississippi, the backgrounds are highly intentional images of, of, of landscape. Like they're in a scene, they're in a setting. I'm not just doing these portraitist paintings, 
that don't that don't have these scenes and various escapes in the background. Like it's been there. When I look at work from years ago, I was like, oh, this has been there. Like the florals and the trees and the plants and stuff like that. Even in my parlor room series, like the elements of the things that's found in my landscape, those things have been there. So right now, I'm 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 trying to step away from what I'm most comfortable in doing, and that's just slapping a figure in there. Like that's that's easy. I want to focus more on pushing pain, you know, and really working about thinking about, you know, the texture and and these environmental spaces that are like these whimsical spaces that we want to go to, inspired by the Return to Eden series that I did a few years back. You know, just these imaginative, whimsical landscapes that are still reminding me of the South, you know, big sky, you know, dirt, country roads, you know, but it's it's really imaginative and, and different. And I think that I'm I'm banking on the difference finding finding its own rhythm in 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 people's lives. Because I think like myself, we're so used to seeing so much of the same same that when you do something that's different, you stand a chance to stand out in the crowd. So but the but but the mere fact I'm doing it because I enjoy it. But you know, it's every now and then I had to step away from what's familiar. I remember doing this probably like in 2011. You know, I just got tired of doing the repetition of what I was doing all the time. And I needed a new challenge and needed something new to do. So I feel like I'm at that point now. Hey, I just want to pop in here real quick to let you know that I'm an artist. I make work about social class, subcultures, race and gender. These topics are complex. They're interesting and they come up in my life all the time because I love to laugh. A lot of my work has humorous tones. I genuinely enjoy making and creating all sorts of things. My main medium is photography and film, but I also enjoy organizing art events. I would love to keep you in the loop of everything that's going on with my art exhibition. So please consider signing up for the Studio Graham newsletter at MissGraham.com slash sign up. Okay, back to the top. Have you ever worked in like stop animation of your work or... Uh, uh, stop animation. No. Mm-hmm. Or have you nah. like ever like worked uh-huh. to animate any? Oh, okay. I could see some of the, cause I know like when I meant your work of like narrative scenes, I did like picture, like I meant like cinematic where you can see the whole environment versus, versus like okay. a portrait. But mm-hmm. you know, that would be interesting. Like as you're talking, as I'm thinking of your work, I could see it sort of being like a storybook or like a short film or something that could be really cool. Mm. even if it's just like walking, like it doesn't have to be like anybody that like turns and talks and like big time dialogue, but it could be, I don't know. I could see like a three channel, just like, like a girl walking or it's like a mom walking, like they're walking from the grocery, like walking home from the grocery store or something. Yeah. That's still, really cool. back. That's, that's, that's still putting people in it. Like that's, that's the easy part for me. Like, yeah, I could, no, no, I, no. I know. Yeah. Yeah. You know, well, maybe it could be like trees, trees in the wind or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I think I think I, I'm seeing some of that. Like, why are you or a talking? Suns, or a sunset or something like that could be really cool. Like in the different medias, the different collage. Have you seen my landscapes at all? So oh, can I spin my camera? Because I got them in the gallery. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me spin Which my is camera. beautiful. So I don't know if you get. Oh yeah, I'm, I can see. Oh, that's huge. Well, actually, those are those are four landscapes that I had kind of put. Oh, together. they're just put together. Okay, they're still big. Yeah, those are really pretty. Wow. Can you make that out at all? I could see. It's like is it like water and like a street and then like clouds and trees in the back or yeah, like the sky is. Yep. Blue. That's, it. Yeah, that's, that's pretty. It. So anyway, that's I mean that's that's some of the things I'm working on. I got some in the studio. But yeah, I'm I'm focused on some landscapes for a minute. See yeah. where it takes me. So tell me about like at the Atlanta art scene. Like, okay, so you have this beautiful, beautiful studio. Or I'm sorry, gallery, Black Art in America Gallery. Yep. Which gallery is and sculpture, and sculpture garden. And sculpture garden. Yeah. Which Tell me about the sculpture garden. Can I come back here with my laptop and work? Yeah, yeah, you can. Oh, you the, can? Uh, 
Yeah, I mean technically, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, technically you can. It's 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 it. Seventy. This is a uniquely different art space. Intentionally, like I tell people, like this is my largest art project to date. I guess buy it conceptually as a company, but something that's tangible that you can see. Like if you could see the space before and like now with the you know uh, two hundred and some odd feet of planter boxes with full of plants and trees and shrubs, and we've got you know fine art sculptures out there. We got garden art out there. We got an old 1960 step band that's painted in a in a beautiful jazz deck. I mean, like it's 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 truly a, a point of destination. It's I would argue it's one of the more unique art spaces in the country. So yeah, it's 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 a space you just got to come to and 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 see. Like anybody that's the people the people that come there, they're just, they're just blown away that this place exists, and particularly that it exists in in a, in in a predominantly black neighborhood. So like. I've had people say, well, you know, this man, this would be great in Buckhead. Well, <laughs> we ain't in Buckhead. We ain't trying to go to Buckhead. We this is we are where we want to be. So, you know, for those that are interested in black visual culture, they they can come, they can come here and get it. Yeah. And then do you you and then in the sculpture guard, do you have events or and then there's yeah. a, those those are like other sculpture is is like artists you represent and stuff like that there as well. There's sculptures. Some some we represent and some some that we just, you know, we, we thought that the their uh work would be great public art in the space. Yeah. So we, we bought it and put it out there, people interact with it. And yes, we have regular programming, uh, from everything from, you know, private events, live jazz in the garden, farmers market, we've had painting in the garden. Oh, fun. Yeah, that's a that's a lot that we've done. We've done out there. And we we'll continue to do. Like we got our one year anniversary coming up Juneteenth. We're calling it for the Black Art Family Reunion. So, oh, that's awesome! <laughs> yeah, if you're if you're an artist, art lover, enthusiast, you know, look and pull up in Atlanta and come check out. We're gonna have a full weekend of activities right here at uh, Black Art America Gallery and Sculpture Gardens at East Point, Georgia. What does planning something like that? What goes into that? Is that like your whole staff, y'all sitting down and like planning things out, like? How do y'all, I'm just so interested in like the behind the scenes of it all. You know I me, mean? I'm a filmmaker. So it's like, I know like. So you would, people would probably be surprised at, at like, I've had like bright ideas that, you know, we put together in like two months. Like our first big show in New York was literally, literally put together in like two and a half months. Like most people plan some of the stuff that we do and they're planning out you know, a year, a year and a half, half in advance. It's I'm so used to production at this point, you know, and we've already got a built in audience. So we are our marketing arm. We got, you know, 16,000 email subscribers and all the people on social media that follow us and we have our core audience. And so for me, it's just really deciding like, okay, what are we going to do? What programs are we going to have? What engagement do we want indoors and outdoors? So it's not, it's not a big, it's not a, it's not heavy lift for me because I mean I I mean I've been been doing production since we started buy it you know what I mean and so I had the bright idea to say hey you know we got our and we got our one year anniversary coming up what are we gonna do and I was like man you know Juneteenth and Fourth of July is typically when people have their family reunions we need a black art family reunion you know like when do we just get together to hang you know, to, to network, you know, because I was also thinking about like the artists, particularly the ones that came down the road that I came that did like a lot of the festivals and around the country, right? Like Atlanta, Atlanta used to have the big national black art festival that people from around the world would come to for, for decades. And everybody was coming in and like, oh man, I remember the festival, remember the festival. And I was like, well, not only did they do it, but you know, they had the black art festivals around the country, Chicago, Philly, Baltimore, it's just like all LA, like all over. And so I was like, man, you know, we just need, we just need someone to just make a call and say, Hey, let's just get together, you know, pull up, you know, have some, eat some drink, some, some, some lectures and panel talks and let's just get together and fellowship really. So that's, I'm calling it for the first that I know the first for black art in America. I'm saying like that. I'm sure some people have already done it before, but the first black art family reunion, this is the this is the first one. I'm looking forward to be an annual thing. Next year we're gonna have 
you know, I wanted to have barbecue cook off between artists. Like I hear artists talk noise all the time about how they can grill, how they can do this. I got two artists signed up to grill for, for a little competition. I want it to be bigger than that. So make sure I want to have about 20, 20 people from around the country come in and we're going to tailgate and we're going to barbecue. And let's see, we're going to have a cash prize and let's see who can really throw down. You know, get a spade game going, some dominoes. Yeah. <laughs> you hey, know what I'm hey. The red cup. Yes. You know, all that there. You know, that sounds amazing. I would love that. Just like even just to know, like for my family, like to know like, oh, yeah, next month. Next. Yeah. Next month. Well, it's May. Like next month we need to go to Atlanta for the family reunion. Next year we need to be in Atlanta for the family reunion. That's. I love that. And I think, too, like, you know, what's interesting with you saying, like, you know, that your gallery is not in like Buckhead or, it's, you know, it's in like a black neighborhood. What I love is that it will bring out the community around too. like that's one of the, like, the neighborhood I moved into was because I wanted to, like, do more community like just community led things before I was living downtown. It's not very community like it's like in a high rise building. It's just not community. People are down there to be tourists. So I just love that because I think what it does is it just sort of breaks the whole like snobby white cube kind of idea of what art is or how people might perceive art. And but there's just so many ways to be an artist. There's so many, many art worlds. And I just love that so much. Like, yeah. yeah. And I would love to see like somebody's artist, they like bring their uncle who like is having a little too much Hennessy, like throwing their dominoes on the table. It's just such a blast. <laughs> Sounds good to me. Yeah, no, it's, <laughs> it, 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 it's, it's, it's a lot of fun. You know how it is when family get together. And that's and that's really what it's about. You know, I mean, as but like like family, many, many of us, we fight. You know what I'm saying? We fight. We argue this and that. But that don't mean that we can't pull it together. And, and realize that, you know, we have a shared and common interest and, and, and common trajectory in terms of just trying to, you know, do our art, connect with people and and live this art life, you know. So, but yeah, man, let's, you know, we, we call them for the Black Art Family Reunion. Y'all pull on up. Come on through. You come on down. Yeah, I know. I think, I feel like last year, when you had the opening for your art thing, I feel like we had some type of family thing. But yeah, I'm going to have to see an around family. I remember Ebony had a, a Black Family Reunion. Ebony Magazine threw one in Chicago. And that was a lot of fun. They just invited Black folks to come out with their grills. And my mom, somehow, because people were trying to figure out how she did this. Like, I don't know if she was one of the first people to sign up, but they gave us like a tent, like a pop-up tent. Okay. And like... I feel like they maybe had like only two other ones out there. And so like we had this like, like pillar, like to be like, this is where our family was. And so people were like, how'd you get this tent? Like what? Because people were just out there with grills, but like we had like a whole setup and they had musicians come. I can't remember some of like the stars, but like actual, like, you know, like known acts were at this thing that Ebony brought in to perform. Might've been like, say like Jamie Foxx or somebody like that, like to perform. And they had hosts, and it was such a blast for the day. And it was like we were out there all day. Okay, okay. So I, I picture love it something here. like that. Yeah, and it was just like, it was just amazing. It's like maybe it's Ebony, you know, like of the staff and whatnot, but it's also like my mom who just so happened to see the card in the magazine and sign up and send it in. You know, it was just, it was just. So when you were talking about that, I was thinking of, of that, and I could see like us all coming and like just like flooding your, flooding your parking lot. I'm just like all of artists coming through with their families and which is also yeah. really cool because I feel like there's so many artists that I talk to, I see, and even just like, I think of like filmmaking colleagues and we just work together all the time. You don't see their families until like never. So like, this is also like a great time with people who you see all the time, whose artwork you collect. And it's just like another way to build up on the relationship. Like, I really think that's a great idea. Yeah. No, and you and you actually helped me to visualize because one of the things I always want to do is get like a pit master to come up. But I could also see like the whole tailgate component. And what you're saying sounds more like a, a tailgate. And I was having a conversation with Jamal Barber Studio Noise. And I'm like, how come how come we don't it's up to us to make these art openings bigger than what they are currently, yeah. right? How how come we don't pull up as a community and tailgate before an art opening? You know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, just make, just make it a thing like they do with these sport, these sporting events. You know, let's make it let's let's make it a, a thing to do. You know what I'm saying? We show up, 
We we show up hours early. We out there tailgate music going, this and that, having a good time. And the reception come, the opening, we pop up. You know, what I mean, I don't know. I, I think, I think, I think, I think we should question how you know how 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 we're doing things right now. You know, like when I think about like, I would love to see more artists show more support for the whole ecosystem of this thing. You know. Show, share, you know, share, share, share works of artists that that maybe you traded art with or you bought or show that you're going to on your own social, you know, you know, bring, bring, a, bring a collector by that's bought five or six pieces of yours to a gallery that you want to support. You know what I mean? So we have to find ways to support each other. I think do a better job at doing that. Uh, you, yeah, no, you're you're making some like good points about this when when you were talking about like kicking kicking back like tailgating to me I'm like we could probably only do that at your place because you own the gallery you know like other places they might be like maybe the gallery should be down with us being there for like an hour after but then they're gonna want to pack up and go home maybe I I don't know I think like you could think like oh yeah after after the gallery's closed like y'all can come down here to you know, my guy Tone's bar because he'll be open until four. So he's like, I already called him. He said he can come by there. But just like, I would just love that to like, just be able to kick back in the Najee Dorsey gallery with just my beer talking about the game. Yeah. In front of your art. That's like really important too. Like even to my neighbors who, if I could even just invite, oh my God, like, if I could invite them to your gallery, like, hey, we're going to watch the game. Like, <laughs> we're going to watch the game. And then you should come in here. If they're not interested in art, they don't think about it. But now they're, like, amongst the art. Like, that's really cool, too. Mm-hmm. True that. True that. Hmm. You got you to get you a space in Chicago. That way, when I come to Chicago, I got a hang spot. Okay. <laughs> I know, right? Instead of just, like, my living room. <laughs> Hey, hey, or my backyard. Works. Hey, my backyard, right? I'll turn that into a sculpture garden with your art. You know, this has me thinking about with, with collectors. Is collector just a fancy name for customer? Or well, you could be a buyer and not necessarily be a collector. I think okay. I think I think, I think collectors are more intentional and more and more consistent with engaging with art. And, and acquiring works over time. You know what I mean? Sometimes people buy something. You could have a buyer that say, oh, I just need something in the house right there. And they might have, you know, two or three pieces. But a collector is, 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 is something, is somebody that, you know, like, I, th- I think I think they become to have a Jones with this thing. Like they have a bug, a real bug. They're, they're out, they're active, they're, they're acquiring works. They're constantly engaged. You know, so I think I think there's a difference like that. That's rhythms right there in Chicago. Right there. I think their definition of people like when they want to join a member, join a uh, group is like, you know, do you own seven or more pieces? And and that's kind of like the only criteria. But, yeah, I think I think that's slightly different. We need them all now. You know, we need our buyer because I think I think while the title collect this is sexy and. We're all working to cultivate relationships and cultivate collectors. I often wonder if if the industry as a whole is would be better off with more art buyers. Because when you what I've noticed is that some sometime when you get to be a collector, you start to have these qualifiers for what kind of work you're gonna buy and, and who you and you know where you may buy that work from. And so like I think you're, you know. You can kind of grow, you can grow out of doing business with with people if you buy into the hype or buy into the names or buy into the 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 market, the marketplace. Well, if the marketplace becomes more sexier than the art itself, then it can become problematic. You start chasing names, you start chasing prestige that you get with going to different shows and posting up by a picture or you know, or even, you know, even even looking at the work that you buy, it's no longer necessarily about the work itself. Uh, but your motivation may change. So I don't know. I think uh, I've seen I've seen I've seen a lot of different a lot of things happen with people over time. You know, like there were there there have been people who were collectors that we was, you know, offering work to and selling to at one point. And then 
their their habits shifted because they started to chase the quote unquote you know trophy artists. Sure. So yeah, you know it's it's I, but I, anyway it's it's more than what I want to get into right now. But yeah, it's it's it's, it's an interesting that, that dynamic. You know. Yeah. How, you know, because I think for me, I, I remember I went to some friends of mine that was having a, they were moving. So they had created this cool setup for like their best friends to come and be able to pick a piece of artwork. They had like some pieces that they just wanted to get basically just to clear their inventory. And this was my first piece of theirs, like that they were giving me. And a lot of their friends there, they were like, oh yeah, I have like several of their pieces. And it really dawned on me, I was like, Oh, maybe I'm just a, like I never thought about as collecting that like you would buy more than like buy more than one of the pieces of the artist. Like they like some people had like five of these people's artwork, and I'm like, oh, I have one of this, one of this, and like I would just move on. So now I'm like, oh, I should like yeah, if you like it, like buy own like three or four pieces from the same artist or whatever, you know? How did you develop your eye? How does someone develop their eye? You think? I think I think with seeing seeing as much work as possible and reading or becoming as informed as possible, and then also having you know historical historical context as well as some understanding of what's happening within the market today. So I think that that all of those factors, along with being an artist, uh, and see, and and you know has has played a role in me developing my yeah, and also yeah. like I mean. Go ahead. No, I was going to ask if you like read what, like, do you read certain trades and stuff or? No, I kind of see what's what's going on in the marketplace, you know, at auction, at the art art fairs. Okay. What some of the gallerists are, 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 are doing, even seeing how some people, what, how people responded to like certain images on social media mm-hmm. and then just seeing how people resonate with the work and then how also the work fits within the context of what's happening in the marketplace. Yeah. You know, like, I mean, there was, you know, there's a few artists that I, I, we started to work with early on that I knew immediately that, oh, this, this is going to hit. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. How does, how do you find your artists for your, for your gallery? Different ways. We have calls for artists. We have, oh, you do. I've, I've had artists that were recommended by collectors or artists that are recommended by other artists, or we just come across work. At different shows, so there's no there's no one way, but yeah, it's 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 but it's it can, it's an immediate thing for me when I see it, I know say so yeah I could I could do something with this. Okay, uh, that's cool. And that can consist of different things because sometimes you know we got work on our platform that we sell, and you know we're happy to put that within the marketplace and say you know say that this work is worthy of 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 the support that we can give. And then there are times when you know, there's something special that comes across and it's like, oh, we got to, you know, I want to represent and work with this artist personally because, you know, I could do something with this that's even, even more than, than what I would do in general. So, and we've had a few artists that we've done that with, you know. Okay. Yeah, no, that's, I think that's cool. And I just wanted to ask, cause I know I have lots of artists that listen to the show and, I know like people are just like when people like hear gallery, they just like perk up. I know artists are automatically like, can they represent me? Can they help me? Can they help me? You know, so I'm just curious. So I had to ask. <laughs> One of my last questions, I'm curious, like are like young black folks buying art? That's a really interesting question because some of the analytics that I've Red suggests that they are. I haven't really seen the evidence of that. I was going to ask if Bio takes lay like does layaway and like oh, payment yeah, plans it. and stuff. We, de- we definitely do layaway payment plan, all of, all of that. We can we can we can work with a lot of come up with some creative ways to get you the art that you want. And there's actually some 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 depending on the cost. There's actually some things that like shop pay on our platform that you could buy and have and get to work on installments. But generally when I talk to collectors about people who are interested in collecting, you know, there's a few things that I think is important for them to, to really ask themselves. And, the, and the, really the question is why, you know, what kind of collector do you intend to be? You know, is it, is it passion, prestige or profit? 
could be a mix of a both. Some people that are just purely interested in, you know, being a passion collector, they come across material that they want to absorb. They can care less what the artist does anything in the marketplace. They just want something pretty. They want something that they love to hang on their wall. I would say that's more like the passion collector, the, the prestige, you know, they're chasing, you know, names, profit. People are looking to, 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 to basically flip over a period of time. So they're, they're also chasing names, but, but they're buying work from like galleries who have a reputation at, you know, clipping certain artists work or they're buying through a Yelp artists that have done through Yale or studio uh, program or, you know, so on and so forth. I like to, I like to work with, I like to work. I enjoy working with collectors who trust, trust, you know, kind of like trust the process with us in the sense of the work, the artists that we represent and the success that we've had at identifying great talent that's doing phenomenal work, got their own voice. And then over time we've seen, their careers accelerate in, in the marketplace and they've been consistent. There are times that we've gotten work for artists and I mean, gotten work for collectors of artists that we don't represent from time to time. We have access to that as well, but you know, in a form collector is a great collector. So we want them to see as much work as possible to read and also to have conversations with, I think it's important to have conversations with other collectors and, and have open and candid conversations with your gallerists, you know, like, you know, what are you looking for? What are your tastes? Where are, are your areas of interest? Where you want? What would you like your collection to be in five, 10, 20 years from now? And then, you know, we can find something that you're going to like once you once we have a better sense of you know what your what your goals and objectives are. But the biggest thing is just to you know find find work that you can connect with, make an informed decision about your purchase. And get with some people that you can trust, you know, that you feel good about doing business with, that you think that's got your, your, your interests at heart. And that's going to, you know, serve you well. So give us a call. Give us a call. Stephanie, it's been great. I'm glad we finally knocked this out. This was great. Thank you so much for tuning into the Nosy AF podcast with me, your host, your friend, Stephanie Graham. I'm so glad that you made it to the end of this conversation. Please kindly let me know what you thought by leaving a rating and review on Apple Podcasts, on Spotify, Stitcher, wherever you're listening right now. You can also connect with me at nosyaf.com via the Say Hello button. And if you're curious about what's going on in my art and film life, please visit my website at missgram.com. Oh, and also, if there is someone that you're nosy about and you want me to have them on the show, please send suggestions via the same hello button and I will check them out. Until next time, thank you so much for being you and see you soon. Peace.